Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you guys how to create an awesome dividend tracker in Google Sheets that shows all of your stocks and all of the dividends they earn by month. In doing this, we can get a comprehensive list of our monthly totals, stock totals, and see a calendar so we know when we are going to receive dividends and how much we will in each month. For those of you that may be new to dividends, dividends are a way that you can earn money through a stock without having to sell it. For example, as you see here, Apple pays dividends to their shareholders four times a year. So for every Apple share you have, you're going to get a certain amount from them. By reinvesting the dividends you receive, you can really build on your wealth, or you can just claim the dividends for yourself and take passive income. In this sample list, I chose 20 stocks that pay dividends four times a year, but if you want to do your own research, there's plenty of articles about there telling you which dividend stocks to invest in. So with that, let's get started on creating our own spreadsheet just like this. Here we have our new sheet. First, we need a column for our tickers. So we'll enter the ticker column, and I already copied all the data over, and we will paste all of our stock tickers in. After this, we can enter all of our column headings, which are just the months. I can go over to the template, highlight all the months and the total, copy, and then paste in here. To save some space in our spreadsheet, because we're going to need it later, I'm going to highlight all of these columns, B to O, and then I'm going to resize them down to size 80. Also, for the sake of our dividend data, I'm going to highlight all of these cells, which our numbers will be in, and I'm going to format them in number as accounting. And then I'm going to take these two rows above our headers, merge them together by clicking Merge Cells, and then type in dividends earned in the year 2022 year 2022 as this template is based off of 2022 dividends actually earned for all of these stocks. I'll also make this heading a lot bigger. We'll do font size 24 and we can center it. One other thing I like to do with a lot of my spreadsheets is click all of these cells and then center them all. I think that looks a little better and then change the font to Montserrat. Next, as you may have seen in the template, each ticker had the name of the stock and the current price displayed next to it. That's where our Google Finance functions come into play. So we're going to add two columns to the right of B. Column C will be titled name, and column D will be titled price. I'm also going to bold all of this. To display the names of all the stocks without having to do it yourself and type them all out manually, you can go into the name cell here, type in equals Google Finance, open your parentheses, and then if we click on this question mark, it's asking for the ticker. So we're going to click on this cell B5 to display the ticker. Then we add a comma and it's asking for the attribute. The attribute we want to display is the name. And Google Sheets knows that as one of the attributes, so we can click on the word name here. Then if we hit enter, you can see Apple Inc. displayed for our ticker AAPL with the name attribute selected. Some of the names are a little longer, so we're going to resize column C to 210. And then I'm also going to align all of these names to the left because in this case, I think that looks better. Now, all we have to do to make sure we don't have to type this function in over and over again is add a little dollar sign up here before B5 and a little dollar sign in between the C and the 4. By doing this, if we drag this function to the right, B always stays the same. So when the function is trying to find the price of a certain ticker, they know that the ticker is still in column B, not C. And then as we drag down, you see the dollar sign before the 4. It knows that the name and price attributes are in row 4. So I'll just show you by dragging this function all the way down, and all the names come in, and then dragging to the right. It's loading for a second, and then we have all the prices. And then like we did with all the other number areas, we're going to format the price by number as accounting. And then to clean this up a little, we can resize column A as size 20 to fit more data in and make it look a little bit better. And then I'm also going to try to make these headings look a little bit better by coloring them as this blue, making the text color white, and then making the header a darker blue and the text color white as well. After this, we can add our next sheet, our dividends list sheet. We'll name it dividends list. And here is where you're going to track all the dividends you receive throughout the year. As you can see on the template, we track all of the stocks, which month it occurred in, and how much the dividend was for, tracking every single transaction. So we can paste it into our dividends list here. And this is the kind of raw data you would need for your spreadsheet. To format this real quick, I'm going to again make this all Montserrat, center it, 
make the dividend format number format accounting give the header a bold white text with a blue background freeze the top row so as we scroll down that stays the same and then i'm going to highlight one row below the data go all the way up and then fill borders and i'm also going to highlight everything below the header go into format alternating colors delete the header section hit done and now we have it formatted one other cool trick that could save you time and save you from typos is by highlighting this entire range here of months, including this last blank one here. Going to data, data validation, adding a rule, and creating a drop down menu. We want to do a drop down from a range. The range, as we can select the data range here, is going to come from the first sheet, and we're going to highlight all of the months here. Once so we have that, we can hit OK, advanced options and display as an arrow because I think it looks better than the chip style and hit done X out then we go back to sheet 2 and you see a proper drop down menu so if you have a new transaction you can click on this and enter the proper month we'll do the same thing for the stock by once again highlighting all the data including the row below selecting data data validation add rule again drop down from a range select from a range go back to sheet 1 and then select all of our tickers then we can hit done and again advanced options arrow done and then on sheet two you see you have a drop down menu with all of your stocks here and now that you entered all your stock data in on this as we'll rename it to dividend list sheet you're ready to enter the functions in on the main sheet we'll start in cell e5 for apple in january and we'll hit equals sum ifs and use our sum ifs function we'll open our parentheses and begin by selecting the sum range the sum range is back on the dividends list, and it is column C. All of column C, so you just have to click on the header here for column C. This is the main part of our sum is function, but then we move on by adding a comma, and we want criteria range one. Criteria range one is gonna be the stock, so we'll select on this column B to get all of column B. Then we'll add a comma and go back to sheet one for criterion one. By selecting on cell B5, we are telling the function that Apple is the proper stock to sum for cell E5. The last thing we need is the month. So we'll add another comma, and then go back to the dividends list and select column A. One last time, we'll add a comma, go back to sheet one. And here, we're gonna wanna select E4 to tell our function that the month is going to be January. After doing this, we can hit enter, and we get nothing here because Apple, as you can see in the dividends list, didn't pay anything in January. Now before we start dragging this function all the way down and all the way across, we need the proper references in the function first. So the ranges of the dividend list, we always want to stay the same. So we're going to add a dollar sign before both C's, both B's, and both A's. That's first. But then there's two more dollar signs we still need to add. We want one before B5. This way, the ticker stays in column B. And then we want one in between the E and the 4, so that the month stays in row 4. We'll hit enter, and then it's suggesting an auto fill, fill already. We'll hit X. But we can drag it all the way across to December. And now we get a proper calendar of all the Apple stocks by month for 2022. Then we can highlight all of this, drag it all the way down, and you can see a proper dividend calendar for all of our stocks each month they received a dividend in the year 2022. But we're not quite done yet. I want to display the totals for each of our stocks. So at the end in the total section here, we're gonna hit equals sum, S-U-M, open our parentheses, then highlight from January to December, hit enter, and you see 91 cents for Apple, and then we can X out of this and drag all the way down to get the sums for all of our stocks for the year. And then if you want monthly totals as well, you can go to the bottom of each month, hit equals sum, open your parentheses, highlight all of your stocks, hit enter, and then drag all the way across. You can take it one step further by dragging one more cell across and you see the total total for all of your dividends in the year. I also want to format this to make it look nice so I'm going to highlight the entire thing here, add all borders around everything, highlight the totals, make them a light yellow, make the total total a darker yellow, make all of the monthly totals a gray, take these three blank cells, merge them together, and type in monthly totals so we know what this bottom row is all about. We can even bold it 
make it the same color as our headings above, and then color the text white. And one last thing that's going to make this look a lot better, but honestly make it easier to see the data, is highlight all of the dividend data here, not the totals, and then go to Format, Conditional Formatting, and we're going to format the cell if it is greater than zero, and we're going to make it a green color. We can then hit Done, X out, and you have a beautiful spreadsheet. And one other thing you can do that makes it easy to sort your data and makes it easier for you to analyze your data is highlighting B4 all the way to cell Q24, then going to data and create a filter. This way, I could go to the total column, for example, sort Z to A, and then it sorts IBM as the highest earning dividend stock first, and then Ford as the lowest at the bottom. Or I could even sort the company name from A to Z in alphabetical order if that's what I wanted to do as well. Mind you that in this list, we assume you own one share of each stock, and the prices vary as you can see a lot. So having one earn more dividends than the other doesn't necessarily mean it earns a higher percentage than the others. These are purely examples and don't reflect recommendations on the stock. And now you're done. You can make your own dividend tracker spreadsheet I'll even drop a link so you can make a copy of this one and try it out, maybe make some adjustments, add some columns, do whatever you want to do. The point is to get you more excited about investing and earning dividends and see what it can do for you. I really hope you enjoyed. If you learned something, please give a like. If you want to see more videos like this in the future, which I'm planning, please subscribe. I appreciate all the support it gives me. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.